All right, now that we've looked at how to create a line, let's look at how to edit this line. Now there's a lot of different commands and functions and there's often more than one way to do everything in ARCHICAD and that can make it a bit tricky. I want to try to teach you the best way to do things. Uh, some people might disagree but from my experience uh, it, it works to work in a consistent way. Alright, so when we're wanting to say move our objects or our elements, how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is to select what we want to move or what we want to edit. If we're trying to select a line, we can either click on that line. When we click on a line, we'll see that it turns green and we'll see that it has a few handles or points or nodes and these black points represent the ends of the line and if we click on the ends of the line, left click that is, it'll bring up a palette and that palette will let us do different things to this line. For instance, drag, rotate, mirror, multiply or stretch or extend. Now if we click the middle of this line with a left click, we'll see we get a different toolbox that appears and this allows us to add a new node point which would effectively turn our one line into two lines. We can change our line into an arc and of course it's easier to draw a line than an arc and so for instance this might be practical for you to do we can create an arc based on a tangent so if we're trying to relate it to another line that might be functional and then underneath it has the same options again now reference points become very very important when we're dealing with editing things so what does that mean instead of just selecting one line if I wanted to select all of these four lines how would I do that I would hold shift perhaps and when I hold shift that allows me to select multiple elements and you see that even though I selected them one at a time they're all currently green. If I didn't hold shift, selected one and then selected another one it would only remember the one that I've currently picked up. Now there's different ways of selecting so I could click on something but that's fairly onerous and if I have a lot of things to select that would take a long time. The next thing I can do is a box select. I used to call it a marquee selection but that confuses a lot of people because there's a marquee tool. So a box select where I click outside of my box if you like or what I want to select and then everything that is within my box will get selected. So two point selection, one click, two click, everything inside my box gets selected. Now there's different ways of doing this and we're not going to get too complicated in it but in our arrow tool if we go up to this top left hand element in our dialog box we see that there's different functions and this means that if we touch it it gets selected or we have to select the entire thing for it to get selected. I prefer this first one which means even if I select a small portion of these lines they will become selected as opposed to the other one and I need to select all of it or it won't get selected. And then finally our third option which is there's a difference between going left to right where it needs to be inclusive or right to left and I only just need to touch it and that's similar to what AutoCAD does so depending on which way you've learnt depending on which way you're working maybe depending on what you're trying to select you might like one or the other of these options for now we'll just keep it on the default which is as long as it's within my selection it will get selected. Alright the next thing to do once it is selected how do we move it? My preference would be to drag it I could just select the edge and then use the drag command or the move command on my toolbar but again please don't do that what I would recommend instead that you do is use the move commands now we find those in different ways we find them in edit move drag and we see that for nearly every command there's also a keyboard shortcut again this would be different on a Mac and a PC but here we see that on a Mac we're talking about command D for drag but otherwise edit move drag now when we drag 
we find a reference point. And if you're not sure what to do, look at the bottom left hand side of the screen. It will give you a suggestion of what to do. Edit drag reference point, sorry, enter drag reference point. I'm going to use this intersection between the bottom points of my line as my reference point. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to move it to my origin point. Like I said before, this little X. It's going to turn to an arrow because it's an important point. It's an intersection. I'm going to left click again to place it. So we don't hold the mouse button down when we move. It's not like Photoshop. We can click and then click again. This might be a little bit unusual to some people who've used different programs in the past. All right, how else can we move? Let's do that again. Let's say I want to move it a set distance now. I want to move it one meter to the right. I can select my lines and instead of going edit, move, drag, I could right click, right click, move, drag. I'm going to choose that same point, click, now I want to move that to the right one meter. I know that my box is a meter, so I could literally just click on this point. Or if I want to do it the long way around, I'm going to hold shift, press D or press R, type in a meter, press enter. Now let's say I want to move it up two meters. Right click, move, drag. I need to choose a reference point. In this case, it doesn't matter what reference point I choose because I'm moving it relatively with a dimension. So I can click anywhere, not even on the box. Click. Moving up, pressing a distance, typing it in, pressing enter, and there we go. I always deselect, and I deselect by clicking off of the object, or if I've got something selected, I can also press escape. Similarly, if I'm in a command, I can press escape to get out of that command, or even if I'm drawing a line, I can press escape to cancel drawing that line. Otherwise, if I draw and click again, it will draw the line. To delete it, I can select it and press delete, or if I draw a line, I can press Command Z or Control Z to undo that line. All right, a little bit more editing. Now that I've got a box, let's say for instance these lines didn't join up. Let's say for instance they were not done very well. I'm going to use the stretch tool here or the uh, move node command. We now have two lines that don't meet and two lines that go too far. They intersect. I'm going to select both of these lines and I'm going to show you various ways of making them join. On our palette at the top here, I have an ability to intersect these lines. If I click this, it will intersect those lines perfectly. What else could I do? I could grab that line and I could stretch it until it joins up, until it turns black, which means I'm hitting that intersection point and that would work as well. What else? I could select two lines that are <coughs> intersecting or they're overstretched and I could use the intersect tool to intersect them or I could stretch it or undoing this, I could use another command which is called trim. Now the trim tool is just here, but I like using my keyboard for this particular command and that keyboard command is command or control on a PC. That turns my mouse pointer into scissors and then when I click on the scissors it's going to trim back to the closest intersection so it's deleting back to this point. And then finally because like I said there's a million ways to do any particular one command we could select both of these lines and then we could use the split tool. The split tool looks a little bit like a tomahawk or an axe. Now I'm going to select both of these lines so I can do it at the same time, otherwise I could just do it one at a time. I'm going to use this intersection as the reference point. I'm going to draw a line basically showing which line or angle I want to split to. And then I'm going to choose the side. Again, read this prompt down if you're not sure what to do. Click on either side of the split line to keep elements selected. So I'm going to click on this side because I want to keep the leftovers selected, which means once they're selected, I can then press delete and they're gone. So lots and lots of different ways to do the same thing. You choose whatever's most useful for what you're needing to work on. So why would we choose different ones? Let's say we have lots and lots of lines and I want these lines to be trimmed to this straight line here. So therefore, the fast way to do that in this case is to use my command 
scissors and that will trim them all back to that line. Of course that's doing them one at a time so it's a little bit slow. I could select all of those lines, use my split tool, draw a line, select which side and delete them. If I've actually got a line, I can even do it more simply. I can select those lines, I can use the split tool, and instead of drawing a line, I can just click on the line using that as my split line, define the side, press delete. So there you go, that's a little, very small aspect of how we can use the line tool. Let's look at a couple more just really quickly. Select this, um, a square is a bit of a problem because it's a bit boring shape. Let's make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to draw a line through the middle and then I'm going to draw a circle. It doesn't matter where this is. I'm just trying to make it a little bit asymmetrical. So I can select our box, move, rotate. When I rotate, I need to use reference points again. So I'm going to define here a horizontal point, or I could click on the reference line. I'm going to rotate it here counterclockwise 90 degrees. So holding shift will make it be exactly 90. Then I'm going to define this reference point click there we go. The next option maybe I want to mirror it not mirror a copy don't get confused mirror the actual instance which means flip it right click move mirror to mirror something I need to define the mirror access click define which is my line where I mirror around I want to mirror around vertical so I'm going to make sure my line is straight click and there we go if you want to rotate a copy or mirror a copy or any of these things, drag a copy, right click, move, we have all of these options as well. Drag a copy so I can make multiples. Select it again, move, rotate a copy so I can do it with multiples. And then finally, mirror a copy, move, mirror a copy and depending on how many I've selected, that's what it will do. And finally, if we want to do this very, very much, <laughs> that's not very well explained. If I want to create lots of these, move, multiply, and I can create a dragged multiplication, a rotated multiplication, an elevation, or a matrix, which means in two different orientations. I'm going to do a rotation. No, I'm going to do drag. And so this, in this case, I want to spread these apart. I'm not sure how far, so I'm going to use increments instead. I'm going to say I want 10 copies. I'm going to select all of it, use my reference point. I'm going to say I want them 5 meters apart. And there we go. Now we've got 10 copies of this. So simple functions, that's how we use them. I've gone and said this quite quickly, but watch the video again, pause it, go back, and so you can repeat each step a little bit at a time.